Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture of mechanical vibration. In this session, we are going to solve one miracle for single degree of freedom free vibratory system. So here I am showing that one case that this is my system where there is a pulley which is massless, so mass of the pulley is zero. There is a spring of stiffness K, and mass is suspended on this pulley. One of the end of the thread is fixed to the ground and that passing over from the pulley and there is a mass. If I will give a disturbance to this mass, I believe that because of the stiffness of the spring or the flexibility of the spring, this mass will oscillate and I have to find the natural frequency of that system. First thing I am considering that there is the mass can only move only in the vertical direction. So that I am considering it as a single degree of freedom system then it is given it is asked that we have to find the natural frequency of this system by Newton's approach as well as by the energy approach approach so I am going to break this session in two part in the first part I am going to talk how I can calculate the natural frequency of this system using the Newton's approach if you will recall my previous lecture in my previous lecture I had I calculated that if my system is in vertical orientation and if I know the static deflection that static deflection basically k by uh, mg by k so the if I know the static deflection I will be able to get the natural frequency which will be equal to g by del static this formula I have already derived in my previous lecture so here I am not going to explain it in uh, further detail but we know that if in this system also if I know the static deflection or the deflection of my mass when I am going to add the mass I, can, I will be able to get the natural frequency so here when I am going to apply the Newton's law I know that for a simple system the natural frequency will be under root k by m or also the g by del static so if I will be able to get the static deflection of this body I will be able to get the natural frequency but this is very special case if I am giving a now we have to understand by looking this system that if the motion of the mass is m uh, x whether the deflection in the spring is x or something else so first we have to see this system and we have to understand the geometry of this system so here I am showing that suppose this is my system initially there is no mass here as I will put a mass here what will happen the center of this pulley will come down as well as the mass will also move in the downward direction do you think that the motion of the center and the motion of this end of this thread will be same or will be different so here I am just giving one hint that these two motion will not be same you can understand from this figure that suppose this is my system and if I am giving a deflection of one centimeter to the center of the pulley what will happen when the pulley will come in the downward side there will be certain free length of the string and that free the string length will be free from both the sides suppose the center is coming by an amount of one centimeter a one centimeter string will free from here as well as one centimeter string will free from other side that means the total deflection of mass will be two centimeter this you can also understand by considering the length l initial and the length l2 and then finally you can calculate the uh, the relation between the motion of the center of the pulley and the motion of the end of the thread or the motion of the mass here I'm not going to explain it if you are interested you can see my other video where I have discussed the D. Lambert principle and similar kind of problem so here please understand and remember that if these are the two cases if my I'm assuming that my mass is moving by an amount of X my I am starting my consideration from the motion of the mass so I am saying that if my mass is moving by an amount x the center will move by an amount of x by 2 that means the deflection in the spring will be x by 2 and the force in the spring will be k into x by 2 why I am explaining all these things because these philosophy we are going to use in the current numerical as well as we, the numerical we will solve in my future in our future 
study. So now on the other end, if I am giving or I am starting my assumption from the motion of the center. So if I am saying that if the motion of the center is x, the mass will move by an amount 2x. So these two point things are same, only the difference if I will start with the x here, it will be x by 2. That means the relation between the motion of the mass and the motion of the center of the pulley is uh, with with a half quantity. Now let's go back to our numerical. Here is our numerical where we are saying that this is the condition and now as I will put my mass m, the static deflection is defined by x. If the static deflection is defined by x, I can understand that the deflection in the spring will be x by 2. Now if I will assume an equivalent system so that we can find the natural frequency suppose there is a k equivalent I don't know what is behind the mass I just know that there is a mass and there is an opening or a thread if I will put mass here I am having a deformation in the or I am having a static deflection of x I don't know what is behind this but so that this is my equivalent system so in this way I can consider that if I will be able to get the static deformation I will be able to get the natural frequency so in this case if my static deformation is x my natural frequency will be g by x but if I will go back and I will make the free body diagram of my pulley I will find here that there is a force acting in the upward direction which is kx1 where x1 is the deformation in the spring that will be x by 2 so my force because of this uh, this spring will be k into x by 2 and I know that there are tension and there will be two tension both the side of the pulley so total force in the downward direction will be 2t and my tension is nothing but the mg so this is my expression from the free body diagram of pulley from here I can get the value of x so my x is coming out 4 mg by g when I am going to put this x in this expression I will get my omega will be g by 4 mg uh, by k so ultimately this is my expression for the natural frequency of this system now if I will use the energy approach to solve the same question this is the energy approach here my approach will start with the dynamic motion here I am not interested in the static deformation so suppose this is my mean position and if I will give a deflection to my body let's I will deflect my system with certain amount x0 it will start oscillating about this point so when it is oscillating about this mean position I have to consider an instantaneous position where I am going to write the equation for the energy in my system so suppose I am assuming that this is my mean position mass is moved by an amount x from the mean position and here I am writing the equation for the potential energy in the spring as well as the kinetic energy in the mass so the total kinetic energy of the mass will be half m x square when I will talk the potential energy of the spring the deformation I am defining by x1 which is x by 2 so the total energy in the spring will be half k x1 square that the summation of these two values will be a constant when I will differentiate this with respect to time my constant will become 0 and I will get my equation of motion so when I will differentiate this two quantity I will get that this half k x I have replaced this x1 by the x by 2 so this is my expression now and when I will differentiating it in and rearranging all the term I am getting this expression when I will compare this expression with my standard SHM motion I know that x double dot plus omega square x so that omega square when I will compare with this I will get that omega square is coming out k by 4m so my omega is here also my omega is k by if you will go back and you will compare this with the, uh, with the Newton's approach there also we got that omega is k by m so in this way both approach are ok but then why there is a requirement of energy approach let me tell you in case of energy approach in, mo in, in some cases where you are not interested to deal with the vector quantities because when you are writing the Newton's law that means you are writing forces and it becomes very important to write the vector uh, write the force correctly that means it's a vector quantity so whenever you are you are dealing with the Newton's law you have to deal with the vectors but when you are dealing with the energy approach no need no vectors energy is a scalar quantity that make your effort less and become the problem becomes easy but this is not valid for all the cases in many cases Newton's approach are easy and short uh, compared to the energy approach but in many cases energy approach is really 
effective particularly when we talk about the continuous system when we are interested to write the equation of motion for a beam or for a string we basically follow the energy approach thank you